Hi everybody, my name is Derek Dodson. I am currently a junior at Illinois State University majoring in exercise science on the Allied Health Sequence. Um, and today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about creatine. So if you are, um, if you play sports, if you've been playing sports for a while, if you exercise a decent amount, if you lift a lot of weights and you're fairly familiar with supplementation, um, there's a good chance that you've probably heard of creatine. Um, and the most common form of creatine that is currently on the shelves or the type of creatine you'll see at stores like GNC, the vitamin shop, um, Walmart, Target, if you're in there, uh, adult nutrition, I'll even like CVS, um, you're most likely going to find a big tub of creatine monohydrate or a little, the same smaller size tub of creatine pills, which those also tend to be creatine monohydrate. Um, going a little further into what the compound is, creatine is an organic compound. Uh, also, it's an amino acid that exists in vertebrates, um, especially humans. It is most commonly found in red meats and seafoods naturally. However, as Mayo Clinic points out, the content found in, in the foods you eat is much lower than the levels found uh, that are in the synthetically made creatine supplements. I'm gonna put a little uh, picture of what the uh, compound looks like up for you now. That's what, it, that's what creatine, the compound itself, looks like written in its scientific notation, essentially. Um, diving a little deeper into the anatomical level of creatine and what it does in your body and your cells, is um, creatine is predominantly used by the creatine phosphate system, which exists in your muscle cells. Um, here, it is utilized by aiding in the recycling of phosphates in muscle cells. Um, creatine helps in the creation of adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, which uh, for short and what most textbooks refer to it as. Um, it makes this by um, collecting adenosine diphosphate and adding another phosphate onto it, which then creates ATP, and ATP is the primary energy source for your muscle cells. So the creatine phosphate system generates ATP the most rapidly. However, it is relatively inefficient in the long term. The creatine phosphate chain is largely used by your muscles when you are engaging in stop and go movements or fast, powerful movements, right? Anaerobic movements where oxygen is not being used by your body while you're doing this. So while creatine comes into your body and largely targets this area to do these things, um, this makes it this makes the target market for creatine supplementation, people who do engage in these fast stop and go sports. Um, and uh, I would say most commonly, uh, people that lift a lot of weights, right? Which is most athletes. But so essentially what creatine is doing is it is helping your muscles or the, it's helping the creatine phosphate system in your muscles regenerate ATP quicker, right? So if you're a weightlifter, you know, if you're, for those of you who do with weights, with lift weights, my bad, or exercise, um, after each set, you know, you can't, you have to take a break because you can't go right back into the same movement or else your muscles will be too tired and all your energy stores for or in the creatine phosphate chain will be depleted. So when you supplement creatine, the idea is, is that it re helps regenerate the ATP faster so you can then, um, you know, move on and continue to do these movements faster. Um, same thing with sports, right? So tying into that, the first time I was ever exposed or heard of creatine supplementation was when I was playing high school sports. You know, some of the guys on the football team were taking it um, while they were lifting weights. And I don't think any of us really knew at the time, like what creatine did, what it was used for. I was under the impression that it made your muscles bigger, which it does to a certain extent. I'm going to get to that in a little bit, however. But yeah, the legality was in question, you know, I wasn't sure about any of this. Uh, none of the coaches seemed to be opposed to it, but you know, I never really got that much information out of it. I know my mom had a heart attack when she was, she found out I was taking this weird white powder, 
you know, before I lifted, probably, you know, assumed it was a steroid. But uh, it is indeed not a steroid, which some people do assume, or an anabolic aid or anything like that. But um, creatine is, in fact, one of the most studied ergogenic aids on the planet. Um, it also happens to be one of the safest sports supplements on the planet. Um, very widely used for, you know, things like I said. And, um, yeah, there's a ton of data on it. Some of it is still in question, you know. The one thing that's kind of hard when it comes to supplements and um, things of that nature that aren't FDA approved, uh, the range in which it is studied and the access to experiments like that are kind of limited. But that being said, like I said before, it is one of the most safest and used sports supplements on the planet. So kind of going off of that, um, there are a decent amount of questions that arise in talking about creatine supplementation. Um, one of the biggest ones is dosage. You know, how much of this should I be taking? How much should this athlete be taking? Things like that. Um, also, what are the benefits of taking creatine? You know, that's kind of a good, good thing to know if you are going to start doing this or know someone that's doing it. It's kind of good to have a base knowledge of what you're getting into, essentially, um, or why people take it. Also, uh, the other big one is what are the risks of taking creatine, which is also good to know if you're going, if you are going to start taking this. You know someone that's taking it. Um, what adverse side effects or risks could people be exposed to by taking creatine? Um, so I'm going to start off by talking about the dosage. Um, there's been a lot of studies that have covered um, recommended doses, and a lot of them tend to have this this set dosage that they used uh, that seem to be the most effective. Um, there are studies you can find on Mayo Clinic. Um, there are studies on ncbi.com. Um, where a lot of these studies are found. Um, but the one I used was healthline.com. There's a little article written about it that draws from a lot of these studies to talk about what the dosage is. It's, I also use this because it's a free, easy access website that a lot of athletes, you know, who um, might not necessarily be familiar with the literature behind it can easily find an access that tends to line up with um, the clinical studies. Um, but anyways, um, Healthline basically describes um, the most optimal dosage to be starting with a loading phase. And this loading phase is basically where you are taking between 10 and 20 grams of creatine daily for five to seven days. So like in a week's time frame. Um, this is then followed by a quote unquote maintenance phase in which you take two to 10 grams daily for a given amount of time. Um, you know, just like every other study, uh, there's subject to controversy. Um, some people wonder if this is too much, which I personally think that, you know, this is, this seems to be the most optimal and effective dosage for creatine and the best way to take it, um, or best amount you should be taking. Um, this is also a lot of these are written explicitly on the tubs and the packaging for creatine. So I would say, you know, going anywhere in that probably isn't optimal or you won't get that big of a benefit from doing any more than that. That is the amount I took and I believe to see the best results from that as well. Um, going into the benefits of taking creatine, um, you know, NCBI uh, did a little study where um, it was shown that creatine did, in fact, uh, in supplementing it with this dose level, there was a 10 to 30% increase in creatine content in the body. And then 70% of people in the experiment um, saw an increase in in a 5 to 15% increase to be exact in muscle strength as well as muscle endurance, right? So that tends to be the um, most common benefit of it, you know, um, along with the regeneration of ATP within the creatine phosphate system. Um, creatine also is said to promote an increase in muscle size, and it does this by drawing water and blood into the muscles and basically 
causing your muscle cells to swell up. So going back to what I said about increasing, like giving you bigger muscles, it does this, it has this similar effect by bringing the water in there and making them look bigger. You know, a common risk or side effect of this is people, a lot of people say is, um, you know, this can cause dehydration, you know, you're not gonna be as hydrated and you should be staying hydrated regardless of if you are taking creatine or not. But this side effect is not proven in these studies. You know, the amount that creatine actually draws water into your muscles and fills up your muscle cells is not super significant. So in turn, it most likely isn't causing a huge um, decrease in your hydration status while you are taking it. Um, it is said that there are potential brain protection benefits of taking creatine. Um, I, I viewed this video that where a doctor claimed that he believes that they should be supplementing creatine more in infants because it essentially, you know, creates a protection of their brain and also can prevent, prevent neurological diseases from occurring. Um, this is even for an older users as well. Um, however, there, it seems to be that there needs to be a little more information to come out or a little more studies that, you know, answer this question or go into the research behind this question. And then finally, another benefit for creatine is improving intense sports performance or explosive power, which, you know, to a certain extent it has proven, but just like everything else, more information could be needed. You know, another potential risk of creatine would be developing kidney stones and potential kidney and liver damage slash failure. These risks, however, have not been proven. There needs to be, there of course needs to be a little more research that goes into it to tackle these questions. But however, um, with the current research status of creatine, these are not proven. These are just hunches where a lot of people have drawn parallels for them. And this in turn, you know, I don't like saying this cause it doesn't sound real, but, um, there have, there aren't really any proven horrible negative side effects for creatine. Um, so in conclusion, um, this isn't by any means me trying to promote creatine, uh, may sound like it given that, given the benefits for it, the, um, research behind it and, uh, the studies that have shown the benefits and tend to lack side effects, but I am not promoting it. Um, I encourage every athlete or someone who engages in lifting weights or exercise to do their own research on supplements before that you take it. it uh, supplementation in general can be slippery in terms of data and legitimacy behind it. Um, however, um, creatine tends to be the most common one. So do your own research. Ask a doctor um, if they think you should be taking it or not. Um, instead of just listening to a guy like me. But yeah, do your own research, talk to professionals, talk to your trainers, um, see, you know, before you start taking it, see if there could be any benefit or if you, you know, want to avoid any risks, anything like that. But anyways, um, thank you for your time. Um, have a good rest of your day and be sure to look into creatine for yourself as well. Thanks.